It's four queens. I got four of a kind on everything. I gotta live like a king. <laughs> hey, catch this rhythm. You feel that? That's called playerism. I'm on the scene, a player clean, poker face, four queens, I got four of a kind on everything. Dig this, living elite, I don't feel complete without kicking at my feet in a Rolls Royce every week. Baby, this is deep, listen close when I speak, I need to at least, cause I'm too much, got two nuts and give zero fucks. I've been player too long for you to tell me having two women is too wrong, the way I get my groove on. If I can't have two, then I gotta move on, even my car is too toned. So when I roam, I gotta bring two home. Quit banging my line, ho. Quit banging my line, ho. See me act like, like you don't, don't even know me, ho. When you see me act like you don't even know me, ho. Understand what we're doing here. Like William, for example, was at the last conference. Brandon, come on, baby, get a clue. How you do what you do? How do you fall in love with me? But I'm not in love with you. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Today is a topic that may be sensitive to some, but it is absolutely necessary. If you've looked at my catalog, I mostly refrain from racializing conversations. Undoubtedly, this is unique to the African-American female. And in, you can't talk about the African-American female without having an underlying conversation about the African-American male. I trust there are many experiences that you've had as black men and women and even those who are not black and i invite you to join the conversation there's been a false narrative that if you are not black you can't speak on black people for the truth is what it is no matter who's saying it and i'm not saying that to say we won't consider the source but feel free to speak your mind you dig i mean it's youtube anyways we got a lot of anonymous characters speaking up any damn ways Corey writes, purchase my conference ticket. It's about to be live in a real way. Peace of the saints. Oh, true indeed. And shout out to those who did get their conference ticket. Um, you can get that by sending $7.99 via Cash App to Cash Stack Marquette. Just include your email address and we'll make sure that you are all set up. It is also on marquetteism.com, but I don't know if the link is easy to find. Carrying on. Yes, this lecture will be deep. It's going to go through a couple critical pieces. Number one, my goal for all peoples is that they should come together in marriage, the male and the female. That's why I'm wearing a manandwomanbrand.com beanie. You dig? We believe in man and woman. They're a natural pair. The black woman has some of the lowest rates of marriage in the developed world. When I say the black woman, I'm talking about African-American women. And one of our underlying questions for this lecture is, well, why are they not getting married? Why are they the least desirable females on dating websites? Is their stereotype of being loud, aggressive, unruly, disagreeable, promiscuous, all these things, is it true? And if it is true, what are we to do to move things in the right direction rather than just dragging the black female through the dirt? One thing I must do is include the link for black females to join in and give any commentary, whether they're saying, hey, Marquette, you're lying, you're off some BS, or hey, you're preaching that gospel. I would be happy to hear from them speaking clearly and preferably briefly uh, if they'd like to share their perspective, because indeed we are talking about you. All right, so that's number one. Uh, then number clearly, two, I'm going to take you through a couple different elements to what leads to marriage. I've actually broken this down rather scientifically, and at some point I will probably formalize this into a book. Very briefly, if you're thinking about you know, what really leads someone to marriage, whether it's a black woman or any woman, 
It is this four-step process, the process of introduction, meaning making someone's acquaintance. Number two, building attachment, which is that flirting that goes back and forth where you're making the other person fall in like with you. And then you move on to bond solidification. This usually happens through formalized titles, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, things like that. And then eventually this culminates in marriage. And of course, there's maintenance that has to occur after that. But with the African-American woman, there are a lot of breakdowns that go on in this process that prevent this process for, from actually being completed. And sometimes there are breakdowns that cause the process to be undone. If you have any experiences with black women that you'd like to go ahead and send in, go ahead and send that in. If a black woman's ever told you, uh, you seem like you like white girls or you seem like you don't like black women, go ahead and send that in. Tell me what the hell they mean. Because it's a curious statement, isn't it? We have Indy said peace to the saints, tuition, Nick Davis. Peace to the saints. And, and shout out to Nick Davis, very hardworking, timely gentleman. Uh, who gets a lot done on our media side. So truly appreciative of him. You're caught up? I am. Okay, please do say that after you complete it. Now, uh, number one, as I said, my goal for all women is marriage. And when I say marriage, I'm not talking about getting married under the law. For the law of most of the Western lands is wicked. And by wicked, I mean it overly favors females, whether they're competent or not on drugs or not. It doesn't matter. They're just going to give the woman the kids. They're going to give them the alimony. They're going to give them the child support and all of it. So that's why you shouldn't marry in the West because it's a bad legal contract but you should still get married upon your word as a man. One important note is that if a woman won't marry you upon your word, then she does not trust and believe you. A woman should view you as the highest law in the land, above police, above government, above all, because at the end of the day, she gets in the bed and goes to sleep with you, not with the government. You're her protector before the government. She got to pick up the phone, dial 911 to get the government to come protect her while you are right there in her household and you would lay your life down for her, which you can't say the same about the police. Now, can you? They might end up taking your life in some instances. So that's number one. If a woman won't get married upon your word, she does not truly believe in you and respect you. And she is trying to subject you to a greater power, which is the government. That's number one. So when I say I recommend marriage for all women, I'm talking about marriage upon her man's word and abiding by the standards of their culture or religion. If you don't have religion, you might have culture. Then the second piece is when we're recommending marriage to all women, which we know is a good thing, the question is, well, why do black women have so many issues with getting married? Is there a problem with them? We titled this one is there a problem in African-American female culture? Which is to say, not each and every one, but the greater prevailing culture of black women, the way they think, the way they speak, the way they dress, the kind of piercings they get, the tattoos they get, the way they style their hair or fail to style their hair. Is there something wrong with those things that affect most black women and cause them to present themselves in the society and present themselves to you as a man in ways that prevent them from being successful romantically or in ways that cause people to create what some call stereotypes? Now, mind you, if it's true, it's not a stereotype. Stereotypes are exaggerations. Now, first question is, what do we accuse black women of? whether it's something that we are observing of them that's factual or something that we're just hearing a lot. So go ahead and post in the chat, you know, send it by Super Chat, PayPal, or otherwise. What are we accusing black women of? I'll give you a few of the notes from my experience, uh, and I'd love to hear some of yours because one of the reasons that a lot of black women were angry with Kevin Samuels is because he called out a lot of things that they claim are not true. Nate writes, the saint is working. I appreciate the work ethic piece of the saints. Oh, thank you very much. And we have so much under the hood that non-members don't even know we have going on. And yes, I am working, trying to make this good for all of us. What I hear about black women is that, number one, they overeat. And I think we saw the data yesterday that, yes, they are generally overweight. One of the tragedies is that they're so blind and so much in denial and have stubbornness that they won't even admit to being overweight. So that's one thing, that they're overweight. 
Number two, uh, they've been accused of being ghetto and ratchet, which on an economic level kind of makes sense in as much as African-Americans are one of the poorer racial groups in the United States of America. That being the case, you're going to have a more significant percentage of African-Americans, both male and female, who fit into the lower class. So of course, you're going to expect them to behave in ways that are not quite kosher. So that's understandable. Uh, number three, they tend to like guys who might appear to be thugs or look like what they would see on television when a rapper is depicted. They like guys in the criminal life, gangsters, you might say. And from my experience in high school, I'd say undoubtedly women like gangsters or what you might call a bad boy. If there are any other observations or stereotypes of black women, feel free to share them right there. Oh, and by the way, the link is in the description if there's any black woman who would like to come and speak up. Now, mind you, we're not talking about all African-American women. We're talking about a portion of them, and we're not talking about them to drag them through the dirt. We're going to give them some game. You heard me? We're going to give them some game that's going to benefit all of us. Those are just a couple of the stereotypes. One thing I have to point out to you guys who are watching is that any problem we identify in the African-American female is not a problem only in the African-American female. This is something that exists in all females of every race. However, it is a matter of degree. The degree to which we observe these things in the African-American female is astronomical, and that's why it becomes problematic. Do we observe the trait of masculinity in women of other races? Absolutely. If you would observe the liberal white woman, you will find significant levels of masculinity. However, if you would juxtapose that to the African-American woman, you will find that there is no comparison for the African-American woman tends to be hyper-masculine very vulgar in her speech, more inclined to engage a man physically during conflict. And a lot of this roots from upbringing, historical factors, absence of father, and that's all fine. I'm going to give a couple recommendations to black women as we go along. One recommendation is that we don't give a shit about your history. And I'm not talking about your own lived history, for it's important for a man to Dr. Phil his female so he really understands what she's been through so he knows how to influence her. What I'm talking about is I don't want to hear about slavery. You heard me? If you are an African-American woman and you were not personally a slave, I don't want you taking me back to slavery talking about black men didn't protect us during slavery. We were subjected to what the white slave master wanted to do with us. He sexually abused us. And where were you? Bitch. Um, I'm pretty sure in bondage is the answer to that. I'm pretty sure in shackles and chains, just like you were most of the time. These historical grievances and victim mindset, this is quite irrelevant to what we have going on today. So my recommendation, first and foremost, to the African-American female is do not utilize historical, meaning past grievances, to explain your present behavior. And that not only goes for the African-American female, but it goes for the African-American male. But right now we're talking about within the context of the romantic relationship with the African-American female. I'll let you read this one. Harry writes, peace to the saints. I appreciate the recommendation for La Placita in San Juan. I took a cute Borican down last night. Oh, praise the Lord. You dig? That's a, <laughs> that is, that's always an enjoyable experience. And with them Puerto Rican mommies, you never know what you get. Don't get me started. On PayPal, we have Alex Anthony sent tuition. Peace to the saints. And I appreciate those of you who do show support. It, it does mean a lot. So as I was saying, uh, with the African-American female, my first recommendation to you is do not utilize historical grievances to explain why you're misbehaving today. We're not impressed. And more importantly, we're not about to get in a goddamn time machine and go back in time and remedy slavery. It's not about to happen. And further, you're just making excuses. Now, is the nature uh, or rather the behavior of making excuses, something that occurs frequently in the female? Absolutely. They're often evading responsibility. However, we find that this is particularly strong in the African-American female, but it comes in the particular expression of combativeness. When you identify a lack or something to improve, they become a combative and aggressive. That is kind of their number one mode of reacting. And it's quite curious because it emulates one of the more natural reactions of the human male, which is to be aggressive. Whereas conversely, you might observe in the white female, typically they'll be passive aggressive. Hey, Barth. 
Bartholomew from formerly Wade said, I had a black woman tell me it looks like you only date white girls. You look so innocent. Ooh, Lord. Ain't that a pity? Now let's dig into that one because that's a really important thing. And this one really exposes the mindset of many African American women. And it's quite a sad thing. Let us do some critical discourse analysis. And I trust that a lot of us, particularly those who are more successful, have heard this lie and accusation come from African-American females, which is, he said, it looks like you only date white girls. And then she even had the added piece of you look so innocent. So if we take that first piece, which is it looks like, that means that we're taking on the appearance. And sometimes they'll even say you sound like. So let's take those two things. If a black female looks at you and says, it looks like you only date white girls. Well, what does that really mean? How can someone have an appearance that screams white girl? That's my first challenge to you all to explain that to me. I would even love to hear a black woman explain that one because it is perplexing on a logic level because it doesn't make logical sense. What I surmise that means is if she says you look like you only date white girls, she is making an assessment of your economic class based on your appearance, or she is suggesting that you do not appear to be in line with the predominant African-American dress culture, which might involve sagging your pants below your buttocks, which might involve wearing baseball caps, which might involve certain styles of hair, maybe a gold grill, maybe tattoos, certain things like that that might make you look like a rapper. Because let's be honest, even since I was a young boy and even to today, the typical style choice of the African-American male is reflective of the hip hop culture. So my only assumption is that she's saying your appearance is out of line with that and she identifies that to be like what it is to be black. And if you're out of line with that, then you indeed must be in line with the mainstream culture of whiteness. That's my assumption. Let me know if I'm wrong. Please feel free to send through your super chat, PayPal, or Cash App to share your perspective on it. Okay, we have Isaiah came in on Cash App. He said, sending tuition, drop a like, it's free. Peace to the saints. You dig. Peace to the saints. So that's number one. And then here's the other deeper part that you have to consider when the black or the African-American female tells you that you look like you only date white girls. One, she's saying, well, you don't look like the typical black guy, which could be a compliment. Don't you don't we all want to be unique? But then here's the other piece is that she's usually making an assessment of your economic class, which is to suggest that, well, you you look like you might be a little bit better off. So being that you're better off financially, you probably don't want me. So it's really a low self-esteem position that the African-American female is taking when she says you look like you only date white girls because subconsciously one thing we know for sure is that the African-American female feels inferior to the white female. Some of the worst white supremacists on the planet Earth are African-American women. And you might say, Marquette, you are fouling out of line. Well, no, my dear boy, the evidence is quite clear. When you look at some of the most iconic black women of today, whether it's a Beyonce, a Meg Thee Stallion, or a Nicki Minaj, you may observe consistently that they will bleach their hair blonde or they will wear a blonde wig, which allows them to masquerade as who? The white woman. The Aryan white woman, the one that Hitler talked about, the one he said was superior to you. And the black woman goes on with this clown makeup and this fake hair trying to emulate that woman, which creates an ironic paradox that the African-American woman, in trying to appear like the white woman, concedes that she finds that woman to be superior. But ironically, she turns around and gets mad when the African-American male goes for the genuine article, which is to say, if I like your blonde wig, African-American woman, would I not like a white girl with blonde hair more? Meaning the real thing. Because we all tend to prefer the real thing over the fake thing, right? You prefer sex over masturbation, right? So if the black girl's wearing a blonde wig, would it not be reasonable for a real man who can get one to get a white girl with blonde hair that grows naturally out of her scalp? She got an infinite supply of blonde hair. And if that's what you like, that should be the one you go for. And the black woman is reaffirming Aryan standards of beauty in her attempts to look like this woman. Because when you look at the makeup industry for black women, 
or rather the choices they make. Not only do they have the blonde wig, they also use the makeup that makes their skin lighter. And you can tell this because you look at their face and you look at their neck. Like, girl, you got a black ass neck. Why your neck look like Bernie Mac? Shorty got the little boozy neck. She got a little boozy neck, but she got the Holly Berry oh, Barack Obama skin on the face. Makes no sense. You even see this uh, something worse throughout the continent of Africa, which is skin bleaching, which is quite prevalent. I say prevalent in as much as it's happening too damn much. It's not everybody, it's, but it's too many considering how damaging it is and how embarrassing it is. So that's number one. A soul said exactly correct. You only date white women is a low self-esteem comment. Indeed. And they're conceding that they find the white women to be above them and they make every effort to emulate white women. So my second recommendation for the black woman who actually is heeding what I'm saying, which is, is to be natural. So if you want a black man who's actually attracted to black women, you must appear to be a black woman. That would be wearing your hair naturally and, you know, respecting your actual complexion and not trying to powder yourself up till your ass look like a, a light skin powder donut. You heard me? They trying to look like Steph Curry when they really uh, supposed to be looking like, um, you know, who's dark out here? Whoopi Goldberg. There you go. You're really supposed to look like a Whoopi Goldberg complexion, but you want to look like Steph Curry. <laughs> Carrying on. Now. Another piece to the gentleman's comment that he sent in by a super chat, he said that she said, you look like you only date white girls. You look so innocent. Now, that's actually quite perplexing, not perplexing, but it's saddening because she's suggesting that to deal with a black female is something that requires levels of being seasoned and savvy and able to deal with challenge or deal with difficulty or unpleasant things because innocent proposes, suggests that you have some level of ignorance, you know, but you got to be savvy to deal with a black girl. And I think at some level, what she's really suggesting is that she expects that those who would be willing to deal with African-American women who would subject themselves to such a thing, being that she has a low view of the African-American woman, these are guys who are either low on that level or have experience dealing with these kind of women, guys who are thugs, gangsters, pookies, tyrones, the ones that they have dealt with throughout their childhood. We have the Level Up podcast for men said peace to the saints. This is Robert Dunn Jr. tapping in. I hope everyone is having an amazing night. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Thank you for standing up. Shout out to Robert Dunn. You On did. On Cash Up, we have CJ. He said peace to the saints. Tuition. Peace to the saints. Thank you for the support, CJ. It does mean a lot. So again, I remind you that the things that we accuse African-American women of or the things that we even observe in them to be true are not unique to African-American women. What is unique is the degree to which you see them. When we're looking at the anger and aggressiveness, the degree to which you see that in the African-American woman is unique. And then when you look at communication, because that's one of the major issues you're going to have with the African-American woman to start with is the communication which is to say that she does not know how to interact with you as a male, particularly as a male who is in a position of authority over her. And the reason for that is 70% of black families are illegitimate, meaning that they don't have a father slash husband in the house. So the black female has never grown up with a hierarchy in her household where she is used to submitting to a black male. She may have had a black brother, but her and her brother were either viewed as peers and treated as peers from her single mom, or if she, God forbid, had a younger brother, then she had the peculiar position of dominating and ruling over a black male. So then you come to her as a potential suitor or spouse. You're not looking to establish equality because that would be unnatural and inappropriate. So you come to her just one notch above her, seeking to occupy your natural position as king. Her having no real point of reference to what a king is, what the habits, traits, beliefs, and behaviors of kings are, and the fact that she should be subject to a king, even if she is indeed a queen. Yes, queen. Even if she's a queen, she has to be subject to the king. 
So she has no frame of reference. And as a result, she is going to put up a fight with you and her communication is going to express her lack of understanding and her discontent. It will be expressed through the most vulgar terms, which is cursing, name calling, overt aggression, and of course, passive aggression, because what kind of female would be a female without being passive aggressive, right? It's a necessity. It is a part of the wiring. I don't care what color she is. Okay, we have Marcus at Peace to the Saints. What do you think of the theory that attraction signals are more easily seen on people of lighter complexion? Blush, contrast between the lips and face, and the eyes have historically been feminine arousal displays. I think that there's some relevance in that fairness does reveal emotion. There's just is very true. It reveals embarrassment. It reveals a number of things. So that is factual. However, I do not think that when you're talking about the black peoples, this is something that is so relevant that it causes misunderstanding and the inability for the black peoples to properly you know, find one another mate and carry on with human and animalistic uh, processes. So I, I don't think that it's terribly relevant, but I think that it is true. And I would also note real quick that darkness is historically a sign of strength and power. And as much as those who work outside or under the sun, they tend to be darker across all of the racial categories, of course. And masculinity is viewed more so associated with darkness. Femininity is associated with lightness. For example, even among the whites, you'll hear them say things like, well, I like a man who's tall, dark, and handsome. Well, you're like, damn, if you white, you ain't dark. Like, how you be dark and white? But when they say tall, dark, and handsome, they're talking about darker features. And generally, you'll hear in the same Western culture, people will say, my fair lady. You know, fair, meaning lightness, has often been associated with being in the house, which is good for a woman to be in the house. You dig? Spread the word to these thoughts. And it's associated with leisure. A woman doesn't have to work. She gets to stay indoors under a roof in that AC chilling. So fairness is associated with leisure and not working and femininity. And also, yes, as you pointed out, you can see not only the reactions, but you can also see the stimulation and the response to trauma. Like when you spank a white chick and that ass turned pink, carrying on. Mitchell came in on Cash App and said, peace to the saints. And he followed up with a super chat said, the coaster looking clean. Indeed, indeed. Appreciate it, Saint. You did. Shout Dylan out. Said, your ability to break down sentences like what you just did is second to none. Everything was spot on. Peace to the saints. I appreciate that. I actually am formally trained in this uh, at the University of California, Berkeley. I did a research uh, paper uh, using critical discourse analysis, which is a framework that came out of Northern Europe. It's used to break down uh, segments of language. And I applied this to hip hop music to identify what the underlying messages in hip hop music are with regards to different work and work identities, meaning jobs. And I was trying to figure out, was hip hop music promoting you to do crime or promoting you to get a particular type of job? Uh, so yes, I, I've done a lot of this and I appreciate you uh, observing that. Paris said, peace to the saints and may you live well. Oh, indeed. We live in beautifully, and I appreciate the support. Nate said, what do you think of when African-American men, women say, I only date white women? Men? Nate, that is a brilliant question. And, and let some woman be wise enough to clip this one and send this one to uh, World Star Hip Hop. Because it's the answer y'all been waiting to hear. If you hear a black male say, I only date white women. This is clearly someone who has some serious psychological issues. These are the O.J. Simpson types. We know that they have psychological issues because a man is attracted to a woman. You can paint her any color you want, but if that wagon is right, if them things is jiggling like they need to jiggle, they look like water. And if that curve is proper and that waist is small and that hourglass is there, Oh, you're going to be attracted. No, I wouldn't care if she was purple. Look like what, what, what they call them uh, folks in the Avatar movie, the blue ones. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, anyways, doesn't matter what color she is. If she looks good and feminine and has the proportions and the lady parts, you're going to be attracted. So the point at which a male says, I only date white women, he is basically making an assertion that, he a believes that there are inherent qualities that are exclusive to people who fit in the Caucasoid racial category, anthropologically defined, or that he, on the other hand, believes that there are inherent qualities 
that are related to those who are not in the white racial category, meaning those are in the Negroid or Mongoloid categories or you know somewhere in between, which is to say that those are inferior traits. To say that I'm only attracted to white women is a very strange thing because if you're attracted to certain features, whether it's a narrow nose bridge or thin lips or hair that drapes down, or, you know, longer noses or, you know, things that are phenotypically generally European or white, you can actually find all of those traits in other races. You can find those traits in Africans. You can find those traits in Latinos and Asians because... It turns out that Africa is the most genetically diverse, whether you knew it or not. Like, for example, I have a, a narrow nose, nose bridge. It's generally the West Africans will have wider noses. You know, I happen to have a narrow nose bridge. You'll find a lot of East Africans have narrow nose bridges. And if you want to find fair skin, the trait of albinism, which is the lacking melanin, essentially, you will find albinism in Africans. And you also find the, the range of melanin produced within Africans, which is pigment that makes your hair, skin, and nails dark. So you can find all of that. So when you say I am only into white girls, this is someone who has a mindset that is clearly damaged and they are suffering from white supremacy. When you find that this is said by a black woman, it's even worse. Yes, I said it. If there's a black woman who only likes white guys, it's even worse. You might say, Marquette, that doesn't add up. How is it worse for a black woman to only like white guys? How's that worse than a, a black guy only liking white girls? I'll tell you why it's worse. Because at some level, men are fairly basic and easy to maintain and easy to understand. For example, oh, now, now I've been around a lot of white guys, right? Most in university in my business life. So I've been around them, you know, slept over at, at their place. They slept over at my place, you know, ran a fraternity full of white guys, about 100 of them. So I know how they behave. I know what they do. They don't do anything unique that I don't do. There's nothing that a white guy does that I don't do and vice versa. They shave, I shave. I happen to be bald head, so I don't have a lot of hair care things going on. So it's basically the same stuff. I point that out because with a black female and a white female, there are significantly different things. I recently got back into the black female game and I had to like reacclimate myself. I'll give you an example. You know, a white girl goes to sleep. They might brush their hair and then knock out. White girl's about to go to sleep. They might brush their hair and, and braid it up and go to sleep. And this is kind of con uh, consistent for white, Indian, Asian, Latinas. They have similar types of hair. They'll brush it, go to sleep. Or they'll brush it, braid it up, go to sleep. Or comb it, braid it up, go to sleep. It's pretty simple stuff. There's no, there's no process or magic. Now, I've recently got back into the black woman game, which I love the black woman game. And I'll tell you why I got back into the black woman game. It was on accident. I spent a ton of game at black women. We're going to get into this piece because this is critical. My whole life, I have spit, spit a tremendous amount of game at black women, more game at black women than any other demographic because it's my preference. It's my favorite. You did. I had a couple lulls in my ability to get black women. Now, check this out. When I was in high school, like, so say elementary, middle, high school, I was a goon, straight up. Like, what they were looking for, a bad guy, that's who I actually was. So it went fine. Man, I had plenty of black women. And I lived among them in poverty. So it was cool. And I wasn't in poverty. It was nice because your boy's a hustler. You dig. So I had plenty of black women. Then I went to university, and there were fewer black women around. But there was still a, because I was at an elite university, there were a lot more black women than there were black men. The black men were all athletes except me and like three other black guys at Berkeley. And then you had the black women who earned their way in generally based on academic merit. And they were from a diverse slice of income, some upper class, some middle, some lower. But it was very hard to get a black woman because they really wanted to either deal with the athletes or they wanted to deal with the black guys who weren't even enrolled in college. I'm talking about random ass niggas that, that work at CVS. You hear me? Like random dude they didn't met at a club in East Oakland. You know, somebody they met when they was getting hyphy. So I started noticing my black girl game, my portfolio of black women was tanking in college. I was like, what? But I couldn't trip because my white girl portfolio was rising astronomically. And I, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, so then when I got out of college, 
eventually I became well off. And you would think being well off, you'd get a lot of influx of black women. You would think you'd have black mothers and aunties and black grandmas saying, you are what we've been looking for. An articulate, tall, good looking, athletic, clever, charming black man with experience internationally, speaks multiple languages, has a book out. You are what we say doesn't exist. A good black man. I want to introduce you to my daughter. I want to introduce you to my cousin. I want to make this introduction. As in, a, as a mature black woman, I see your potential. I want to connect you with a black girl who is worthy. Did that happen? Nah, maybe like twice. But on the other hand, you got Armenian women. I, I'm at the dentist. Armenian woman, like, hey, um, I got a cousin you should meet. You got Korean women and Korean Korean grandmas trying to put me on. You got Mexican women trying to put me on to their daughters, and I'm just tripped out. Like, how is it that all of these women of other ethnicities? are trying to put me on with their daughters, but the black women are not doing this at the same level. And I realize that it's because number one, when an Asian woman encounters a man who is successful by financial means, he's stable. He seems like he has all of his ducks in a row. He's presentable. They look at legacy and marriage and children and how you can provide the long term. Further, they're not looking at you with significant bias, especially if they're not from your culture or they're not people who have been over consuming popular culture, namely thug movies and hip hop music. Whereas conversely, you'll see a mature black woman looks at you. You might be wearing a whole business suit. You don't went to top universities. You're a technologist. You're a CEO. But they look at you like, I wonder what's wrong with him. They look at you like, oh, you know, he remind me of so and so. They look at you and they stereotype you worse than a white person would stereotype you. So it's actually quite ironic that you're experiencing dis discrimination and racism from your own. Huh? Okay, we have Harris sent a cash shop. He said tuition. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Harris said, in my youth, black women would say I look and sound like I only date white women. It's crazy. And the sad thing about it, too, is you get treated like that. Then you go ahead and stack that bag up. Right. Or you stack up some clout and some fame. And I didn't get to that point yet. Then you end up with a white woman because either a there's more white women around you because you're wealthier and there tend to be more whites in wealthy society, more blacks in poor society. Now that you're wealthy, you tend to be around more whites. It's just a function of income. And you end up with one of them. And then they say, oh, what happened? It's like, shorty, I was trying to holler at you when I was in high school and college. You wasn't messing with me. If you would have messed with me, you might be with me right now. You dig. You didn't miss the bus, baby. Same experience in college. White girl portfolio exploded like crypto. Bruh, it was on the rise like Bitcoin in a real way. Jabrizi said, the black women be hard to pull when you're successful sometimes. Shaking my head, I feel you. Oh, but trip on this, Jabrizi, and I know you know about this. Now, here's when my, my black girl portfolio starts to rise again. So in high, in middle uh, elementary, middle high school, black girl portfolio was vicious. You heard me on flea had the baddest ones then in college it did white girl portfolio was going yay yay then when i got out of college i was you know started becoming well off and the black girl portfolio was still low then i started getting clout a little bit of clout and fame then the black girl portfolio start coming up they start hollering at me i ain't even have to spit game they hop in dms bad ones and I start thinking, gee, this is interesting because my money hasn't risen significantly. It's the clout and the fame that's getting them. And I thought that was really fascinating because black females are so concerned with fame and, and like status. That means more to them than the practical aspects of actual wealth. You see, the black woman doesn't actually fundamentally understand wealth and money. She didn't grow up middle class or upper, upper class. She under, doesn't understand what things cost. Most females don't. But even less, that's less important to her. She didn't grow up with money, but she grew up in the neighborhood. And there's that one popular guy in the neighborhood or at the school. There's the, the dope boy in the neighborhood. Everybody want to be like him. He, uh, he always had the new J's. So they understand clout and attention. And they are obsessed with that stuff much more strongly than a woman of any other race. It is incompatible. It, should, it, it cannot be compared. So now I got black girls hopping my DMs. It's something vicious. So I wanted to point that out to you guys. And, and my number three recommendation, actually, I'm not going to give the number three recommendation to black women yet. What I'm going to do is do something better. I'm going to explain why that is. The black female is looking for the wrong things because she has not had any masculine guidance. 
she has not had any masculine guidance, whether it was growing up or even now that she's a mature female, she doesn't have anyone to bring this boy or man to and say, hey, vet him, let me know as a woman if he's worth being with. As my protector, whether you're my father, uncle, OG, somebody in the assassin, whatever it is, as my protector and my male representative, vet this guy I'm interested in and let me know if he's going to be a good father, if he's going to stick around, if he has good uh, credentials, if he has good credit, if he has a financial base, if he has a plan. They don't have that. They try to do it themselves. And what happens is they use their feminine thinking and their incomplete amount of experience and education to wrongly assess. And that's why they end up as single mothers with Pookie, Ray Ray, and the bunch. Go ahead. Real quick, Demorphus said this is why people who live check to check blow a check on designer. That's every race, though. It's all low class. Yeah, it's lower class people of every race because the key to being low class is to appear that you're not low class. So you make every effort to buy designer. And that's one of the issues that I took with Kevin Samuels is that he was very low class in his thinking and behavior. I can assure you, if you ever spend significant time around wealthy people, they do not drink soda. I promise you. They do not drink Red Bull. I promise you. And they do not floss designer. I promise you. These are the habits of a poor person, not necessarily only a poor black, but just a poor person in general. Those are not the habits of the wealthy. Okay, Zanaria said peace to the saints tuition. Peace to the saints. Diego said, peace to the saints. Thanks for all your insight. Much needed in this lost westernized society. It is indeed lost, but it shall be found and it shall be healed. And that's what, exactly what we're talking about right now is culture change globally. Mr. Moore said, peace to the saints. When I first moved to Atlanta from Ohio as a young man, I remember all of my black classmates in grade school said I spoke white because I spoke proper. And you notice I often encourage you all to speak and write properly, which is saying according to mainstream English. And the reason for that is because it has brought me tremendous advantage. And if you've read my book, The Black Box, and I advise you to pick it up, you can get it on Amazon, The Black Box, Marquette Devon Burton, or you can get a low cost ebook at marquetism.com. I say that not to sell my book, but I say that because I go through the specific experiences that show you how you can get those small advantages that are going to land you up here. Because I can assure you that when a white person who's offering a job meets Marquette Devon Burton or Mark Johnson, who's also black, and they can hear my voice and my tonation and my usage of language, I have the advantage immediately. You see, if he's talking like a Chicago drill rapper, a mumble rapper, not saying his words clearly and enunciating, not using proper diction, he's out of the game. And let me remind you all of something that I guess might not be a reminder. You might have never known. There's no such thing as black English. English comes from England, the UK. It's a British thing. It comes from Europeans. It's a white language. So to bastardize it does not make it African-American. To mess it up does not make it African-American. What you understand to be black English or African-American vernacular is merely the result of African-Americans being systematically denied education over hundreds of years. So you are speaking the language of former slaves who did not get proper schooling in English. And in as much as that is the case, that is nothing to be proud of. Do I periodically revert to African-American English? Of course, it was my mother tongue. It is what I was raised on. But when I'm in the mainstream, especially speaking to strangers, I will speak in mainstream English because it is the best representation of me as an educated businessman. And I advise you to do the same. And also, it's easier to understand. Black people be confusing the shit out of each other sometimes. Sometimes homie be like, hey, bro, let me borrow a stack. And I'm like, damn, is that $100 or is that $1,000? What is a stack, $100 or $1,000? Or they be like, hey, man, I need a band. Is a band $100 or $1,000? Because when I have bands, it's those bands that are yellow. And that's 10 thou wow. You heard me? So what are we talking about here? And that's the problem with slanguistics. You don't know what the hell anybody's talking about. So I advise you to speak properly. And that is why within the assassin culture, we advise you to write and speak properly. Solon said, I remember a time during football practice in high school that I spoke like I was white. My oh. coach spoke up and said, no one talks white. You talk well. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, actually, I do want to make an amendment. There is a such thing as talking white. It is not when you are using the correct word or a proper grammar, but every culture has a set of ways that they manipulate language, whether it's tone or it's word choice that do signal their ethnic group. For example, there's definitely a way white girls talk. 
And there's a tone they use. Like white girls tend to use up tone. Like they're saying things and it sounds like a goddamn question, even if it's not a question. Or they use the word like excessively. We call it valley girl. It's like a white valley girl. So there is a way. And for example, another thing that uh, some whites say frequently is they'll say things like, oh, for sure. Whereas white people might say, or black people might say, for show. Sure. Say, hey, you coming to the party tonight? For sure. That might be a white guy. You coming to the party tonight? For show. Sure. That might be a black guy. So for sure is proper English. However, that formulation of language is chiefly white, American white in its usage. If you were in the UK, you probably wouldn't hear this as much. You wouldn't hear white folks saying, for sure, it's American white. Mr. Moore is back. He said, Mr. Burton, we spoke on IG a week ago and I have purchased the book. I will definitely be the next generation of the greats. And I'm honored to have you as one of my generals from the young soldier. Peace of the saints. I'm so happy to hear that. And there are many among you whom I see tremendous potential in. And I know that you will make yourself proud. You'll make your families proud. You'll make the assassin proud. You'll make me proud. And you will be great ambassadors of our culture and, uh, and of our way. You see, no one will ever follow a way unless it bears fruit. I know that we teach you guys to be excellent, whether it's the fact that any man who is within this thing of ours, I know that you can do 15 minutes of jump rope. You can run two miles. You can do three sets of 16 burpees. I know certain things about you. I know that you have basic education and personal finance. I know that you are a proper, serious man. And that is what we are spreading. We have King Supremes and $100. Baller alert. Speaking of prosperity. Said, peace to the saints. I'm from Brooklyn, so I can't disagree with you. Question Are these issues as prevalent in the wealthy black communities like PG County, Maryland, and other black middle class communities? Of course not. You're never going to find that when you go higher in wealth, you're going to see the same problems of the lower class. And there are a number of reasons for that. Number one, the lower classes generally have less intelligence. Let's just be real here, right? That's why they're lower class. If they were smart enough to figure shit out, they'd get into the upper class because that's where we all want to be. Because number one, you're dealing with people who are generally more intelligent. Number two, you're dealing with people who have greater resources, which means they can get help for certain challenges that they are experiencing or certain bad behaviors they're demonstrating. And thirdly, they tend to have more education and most importantly, more exposure to other cultures. And when you're exposed to other cultures, you might pick up something or you might learn something from that other culture. So undoubtedly, you will not find the same kind of behaviors in the black upper class that you would in the black lower class. I've been to PG County, Maryland, so I know exactly what you're talking about. And there are other very wealthy black uh, enclaves. You might find some in Atlanta, et cetera. But the most important thing to know is that still you do find a peculiar thinking and behavior throughout the black income strata. And one thing I would really point out is that there is a very serious uh, lack of self-regard and self-respect and self-understanding among the black peoples of any income level because they actually don't know what a melanocyte is. They don't know what it is to be black on a scientific level and what those implications are for you actually do have tremendous advantage as a black human and so there's not that self-love because there's not the self-understanding thank you for your question yeah. oh and i shall another thing we have to talk about with regards to the black females and it kind of saddens me because they're spreading their culture around the world because america is the most culturally influential nation today and that has ever been as not only do we have the most economic power for the time being, we also have the greatest ability through our technology, through Hollywood, through Netflix, to push our culture out abroad. And so no matter where you go, everyone wants to be like Americans. In fact, I will share with you something that made me chuckle. I was hearing from some of my European friends who came in to visit. They said to me, they said, hey, Marquette, I am shocked that there are not more black people in America. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, I watch a lot of television and there's black people all over TV and some of the biggest box office stars in the world are black. You know, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Will Smith, Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, Tupac Shakur, 50 Cent. Like, these are all the guys we know. Like, I thought America would have a lot of black people. He's like, no, no, we're 12% of the population. But our projection is far greater than 12%. And our contribution to culture 
outstrips our small population. So the African-American as a tribe is the most influential tribe of black people in the world and the most economically empowered tribe of black people in the world. And we've invented a lot of stuff. I mean, we invented hip hop music. We also invented rhythm and blues, R&B. We also invented jazz music. We also invented rock and roll. And the list goes on. So that being the case, we are extremely influential. You look at our musicians of today, when you're looking at the black female, you have the likes of Nicki Minaj, the likes of Megan Thee Stallion, extremely ratchet, low-class females who spread vulgar messages of being over-sexualized. They share a philosophy trying to popularize the idea that twerking and prostituting yourself is the best means of earning and gaining attention. And what they do through their masculine music is brainwash an entire culture of women the world over. But especially, they have the greatest impact on young black girls. And this is why you have these Nicki Minaj's and Meg the Stallions who grew up on the mantra of all my independent women, all my single women, all my single ladies coming from Beyonce. I don't even know this song. Coming from, from Beyonce. When ironically, she was singing these songs while not being a single woman. She was praising independent women while being a married woman. So that lets you know she's making a cash grab because she knows her demographic are single mothers, lonely black women who are too damn disagreeable to be with a black male leader. But she made the music for you dumb broad so she can make a buck. And then this bad, evil, wicked music is spread around the world. And what's worse is you have young girls being raised on these ideas and then they interact with us based on these ideas of behaving like men because what is a female rapper other than a female who is trying to behave like a guy because rap itself is a hyper masculine art form we have brickster said does your book have an audio version if not is it possible to to create some. I put it in the chat so you can scroll up and find it there. Indeed, eight hours. I recorded it in my own voice, which you will not find to be common among any author. And I've done that so that there's the authenticity of the true characters who were in those stories. Because only I know what a a, a, a gangsta blood sound like from West Side Denver Lane PDL. So I want you to hear that authentic voice. And I just posted it again. Appreciate it. We have Yathef said, just showing appreciation. Peace, everyone. Peace to the saints. I appreciate you showing appreciation. That means a lot. Carry on. Thank you very much. My other recommendation. CJ said, got to love these people to disagree with a saint hiding in the chat. Click the link and have discourse. Oh, indeed. And you will never see anyone step up to have a straightforward discussion with me because none of them can match me. Because if they could match me, that would suggest that they have intellect. And if they had intellect, we would be in agreement. So there would be no need for them to come onto the link. We have rated RJ, set, just sent tuition. Appreciate it. Carry on. My third recommendation to the black female is to have your potential, potential man vetted by a man. So... You might say, well, Marquette, I don't have my father. My uncles are in jail. They're deadbeats, et cetera. What you should do is rely either on your pastor or whatever religious figure is the patriarch in your local town um, or any grandfather, uncle, or man you respect and shares a culture with you to vet these men. Or if you're within the SAS and if you're a lady saint, We are creating um, processes through which you can reach out and say, hey, I'm interested in this guy for marriage or for serious dating. And one of the saints who is mature, a mature man, can, you know, basically interview this young man and see if he's worthwhile. Check into him and see if he's worthwhile to make sure that you are represented as a woman. Jason said, I recommend the audio book. Hearing the different voices brings the book to life. Indeed. Shout out to the saint. You dig the emperor of Miami, the young man. Rickster, who's the one that asked about the audiobook, he said, thank you and peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Geek Speak says, our numbers our numbers are larger if you include black Latinos. White people count Italians, Germans, and other groups in their population. The reason that black Latinos are not included in the census data is generally based on how the government has sliced things up. 
There are also some curious things in as much as, and I've traveled throughout Latin America and lived in many countries with significant Afro-Latino populations. And you've seen a lot of me in Brazil and a lot of Publica Dominicana and Puerto Rico, et cetera. And in some cases, you'll find uh, Black Latinos who would rather identify as just Latino. You know, they don't identify as Afro-Latino. But at the end of the day, the population is a minority population in America have a female who's been disagreeing. She said, pay for me to call in. And then she decided to say her attention cost. This, this is really my good. My attention cost. I'm valuable. Yes. I doubt that. And I appreciate her giving a good example because this is the type of female that is very common in today's society. And this is not only of the African-American race. All females in today's society have sexualized themselves to such a degree to where they are some form of prostitute, you see, whether it's a situation of they're on OnlyFans or they're an atmosphere model, they find some way to be compensated for their time, but really they're being compensated for their sexual potential, the potential for somebody to beat that down, you heard me? So they feel like everything they do should be compensated. That's because they're just like a a fall down bitch. You know, I don't respect your hoeing. You dig. That's what I'm saying. And let's be real here. If you really had your time of any value, you'd probably be writing in complete sentences. And moreover, I, you'd have a name that I recognize. You don't have a name I recognize. You're, paralegal. you're a fucking paralegal. Oh, he he oh hell nah. Look, shorty. Shorty, you talking to a big boss. You heard me? A paralegal wouldn't even get a conversation with me. You're, come on now. And I'm not saying that to disrespect you, but I'm saying you've already hopped out there and put yourself in the frying pan. Number one, no disrespect to anybody who's a paralegal. It's a fine profession, but you're talking to a boss. You know, cats who got three, four lawyers. You know what I'm saying? Ones that charge significant hourly rates, but they talk to me for free because we have a relationship. You know what I'm saying? And they know that in the long run, they'll get more money that way. You'd be smart to play your position. You're a paralegal. You're under an attorney. And an attorney's under me because I hire attorneys and have multiple of them. So your time is not worth that much money, especially because I'm not trying to have a paralegal conversation. So I'm not engaging your paid skills. You're just representing yourself as a woman, as a black woman who has an opinion, obviously. That's why people suggested you hit the link further. If your time was so valuable, why are you spending it babbling in the chat? Huh? You really don't have an opinion that you stand by. And so what you should do is be a little bit more feminine and sit your ass down and shut the fuck up and try to learn something from a male leader because I can see that's what's been lacking. And that's a major accusation that's levied against black women is that you don't know how to shut the fuck up, which is mostly true. It's mostly true. And I also want to throw out one other thing. When we go back to the Kyle Rittenhouse thing, a lot of people didn't do the research to go back in time and figure out how all that problematic stuff happened. Kyle Rittenhouse, crazy little white boy who was airing people out like it was call of duty. He was going in. But the question is, well, why did that issue happen to where he felt he had to go protect because there were all these riots? Well, the rioting started because a black man was killed by the police or or was he paralyzed? He was killed or paralyzed. I forget which one. Doesn't really matter. So many of them happening. But what I do know for damn sure is the reason that the police even showed up because he had a domestic dispute. The domestic dispute was with a black woman, a disagreeable black woman who appealed to a higher authority, called the police on her own man, and the police came and eventually end up shooting him, which caused him to suffer serious injury. You are that type of female, unruly, big-ass mouth, and try to go at men when really you need to sit your ass down somewhere and play a female's position. Petty Fresh sent $50. Baller alert. He said he's consistent. Indeed. He said, yeah, right. They scared shitless to call in. Marquette, thank you for starting the assassin community. I needed this in my life. Appreciate that. You know, we all need it. So many of us around the world. And that's why it's something that, you know, is taken as a fresh glass of water to so many. Um, And we will see this culture grow. And it's already growing. Are those Bugle Boy jeans you're wearing said they won't call in. Much respect to KS, but you're on a different level in terms of intellect. They know who to argue with and who to steer clear from. And this is factual. And what's more is that I've never pretended to be something that I'm not. And when I am in error, I am willing to admit that. And we all sometimes are in error. Um, let's get you caught up. Yeah. Fantastic. A, real quick, there is a. Cash app, it says Peace to the Saints, and he said it's pronounced Javier is his name. 
Was it Javier? It looks like Javier, but he says name is pronounced J V or J V R. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. I just want to make sure. Cool. Now check this out, Saints. I actually have a piece here that I wrote several years ago, and it's it's so funny that I talk about it now, and I avoided many years talking about this blog that I started writing. The reason I started writing this blog is because many years ago I was having trouble dating black women, and my whole goal was to marry a black woman. And the reason that I wanted to marry a black woman is because of three reasons. Number one, I was raised very well by black women, multiple, plural, you know, mothers, aunts, professors, you know, black women who can collectively nourish me. So I have a very positive view of black women. <clears throat> Number two, sharing a culture with someone makes it easier to get along, right? If I'm Mexican and you're Mexican, you know, we know our kids are going to have a quinceanera. We know we both like carne asada. Like, you know, uh, things are easier to uh, mesh. You know, we can mesh our families easier. And then number three, you get to avoid discrimination, racism, and white supremacy uh, when you're both of the same culture. I'm not only talking about discrimination and white supremacy from actual white people. I'm talking about from black folks too, because you're a black guy, you marry a white girl. Now the black chicks are talking greasy about you. You heard me? And so those are all things I wanted to avoid. And because of those three reasons, I very intently pursued black women. And I was very perplexed as to why I was having trouble in the black female dating market, because number one, I was well off financially. Uh, I was making a good income. I'm tall, I'm athletic. I'm very confident in my presentation. So I had all of the things that women in general are looking for, yet I was struggling. And as much as I, was, I would approach a lot of black women and they generally put up some defense or act stupid or be rude or impolite at a much more consistent level than other women, right? I can tell you there's one time I approached this woman, she wouldn't even shake my hand. You know how you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Marquette Devon Burton. She wouldn't even shake my hand. African-American woman. I never experienced anything of the like. And it's very unique that you'll experience that. And that's mostly going to be among the African-American lower class where they're so rude in the way they engage you. And so I sat down to write a blog so that I might, one, understand my situation and two, help black women who are sincere and actually seeking to become married and have a proper family. So I wrote this blog. I never finished it because I didn't want to put it out publicly because I know that black women cannot handle the truth. Black people in general, but black women in particular cannot handle the truth. So I'm not going to put this out and have these, these psychopaths cancel me and mess up my bag. And I was much younger. And now I find that there are greater things uh, than the bag. So the first piece that I thought was funny that I recorded here, there was one time I was living in Baltimore. Now, if you've ever been to Baltimore, Maryland, Baltimore is an extremely black city. Baltimore black as hell. Whole city looked like Kodak black. Black as hell. I'm walking down the street because at the time I was in a program called Teach for America, which is where people who graduate from elite universities go into the worst schools in America so that they can teach and provide those kids with a quality education because most of the teachers are kind of crummy and underqualified. Provide them with the best education so that they may rise up out of their situation. And that's what I wanted to do because I found that education transformed my life. So I'm in Baltimore and I'm walking down the street with this white girl named Kyla who, mind you, was bad. And at the time, I had never had any romantic involvement with her at the time. I made it come up, though. But, ooh, she was bad. I'm talking about slim ting, waist about this big, hips about this big. She was slim. The waist going like this. The hips bang right back out. Grew up upper class. She actually went to Berkeley, took a degree in chemistry. So she was also highly intelligent. Long brown hair, nice body to the hair, very large eyes. Had a fatty on her? What? Zero percent body fat with the fatty? What? She was bad, bad. You heard me. And we in the same industry. I know she has a kind heart and she's super feminine. She was actually homeschooled. So we're dealing with a rich white girl who's innocent was homeschooled. What? Man, she's a real win. So anyways, we're walking down the street. I don't remember what we we're doing, but we're walking down the street. And there's a, a beat up ass car drives by old beat up ass Toyota driving by and it slows down and we in Baltimore. So if a car driving by and that shit slow down, your spidey senses better start tingling. If your spidey senses ain't tingling, your ass is lacking. So my spidey senses start tingling. I turn, it's a car full of black chicks. And then they, they slow down. She, and one of them yells out, sell out. 
And then they skirt off. And in my head, I'm like, wait, hold on, bitch. Number one, I'm not even dating this white girl. I'm not slaying this white girl. I'm not dating her. We're colleagues walking down the street. We're both just getting off of work. We're walking down the street. We came out of a professional development. We're walking down the street. That's all there is to it. That's number one. Number two, it's like, why are you so damn aggressive that you would come at a man like that as though you're on my level, as though if I was swift enough to snatch your ass out that car, you could defend yourself? You wouldn't. At that point, you'd have to appeal to the government. You'd have to scream and yell because I'm like, Ike Turner, your dumb ass. So why are you as a female being that aggressive to a male? And then thirdly, why are you pretending as though your ghetto ratchet ass, Baltimore lace front have it ass, Big fake eyelash have an ass, long fake nail have an ass is going to fuck with me anyways. Like if I saw your dumb ass in Mondawmin Mall, shout out to the people from Baltimore. You dig? They know what I'm talking about. If I saw your dumb ass in Mondawmin Mall and I went to go holla at you, which I probably would because I'm a game spitting player. You dig? If she was thick, thick, I'm a holla. So if I went and hollered at your ghetto ass, like you going to give me some play, you ain't giving me no play. So why are you pulling up on me, yelling at me while I'm with this white chick calling me a sellout and I ain't even dealing with her as though she's taking me away from you. She's not taking me away from you because you wouldn't mess with me anyways because you don't like good men. Black women say, oh, well, where are all the good men at? It doesn't matter. You don't like good men. African-American women do not like good men. You like Tyrones and Pookies who will impregnate you and abandon you. That is your programming. And that is precisely why I'm creating this list of recommendations and why we provide education so that you can get out of that mental illness. And your therapist ain't going to get it done because they don't understand the culture. And more importantly, they ain't going to tell your ass the truth because you're going to stop paying them. I'm going to tell you the truth because I don't give a fuck. <sighs> but yeah, that was a crazy story, ain't it? I mean, like a car full of hood bitches just pull up, sell out, skirt. <laughs> Like, what the? I ain't even smashed this white girl. I'm trying to, but I ain't even smashed her. So disrespectful. Now, the goal of this piece is not to explain the origins of black women's behavior vis a vis black men pursuing a serious relationship. Instead, this work provides a summary of my notes on their behaviors in the last six months. This was like years ago. In the last six months, of me engaging them. And it provides recommendations on how they can achieve their goals, which should be marriage. Every woman wants to get married, even African-American women, even, whether they'll admit it or not. Never trust a woman who claims she doesn't want to get married. She's lying. If they say they don't want to have kids, they might be telling the truth. But if they say they don't want to get married, they're lying. Women are very much so fearful animals. So as I said, there's this four-part process. There's introduction when you first meet the girl. That means when you're spitting game at her, or she's spitting game at you. Secondly, there's the building attachment phase, which is when you're trying to get her to like you or vice versa. Then there's the bond solidification phase, wherein you're formalizing your title. She is officially your girlfriend. She's your piece. And then there's the marriage where it might evolve to where you are locked in for life. You might be cohabitating, living together, relying on each other, sharing bills, sharing bank accounts. That is marriage. In this first stage of this process, the introduction is the instance wherein a male drives a direct contact with a female for romantic purposes. So generally that process starts from you, the man. And here's the funny thing. What I've noticed in my life at this stage, whereas black women are concerned, if I go approach a black woman who doesn't know me, I probably got about a 30% uh, success rate. 30% on converting that contact information and getting a response from that approach. So if I approach 10 black women, I'll get 30% conversion. If I approach any other race, it's much higher except Asians. I, I don't see a lot of them, so I can't really speak to the data. If I approach Latinas, way higher conversion. If I approach white girls, way higher conversion. But then there's the incoming interest, meaning the chicks that hop in my DMs. Now I'm looking at my DMs. They're getting really dark. You heard me? I'd say about 50% of the chicks who hop in my DMs are African-American. And that's because of the clout and the fame. And they attract to the clout and the fame. If they look at you as a star or they see that people are circling around you to give you attention, oh, they want to be a part of that. I find it to be extremely disturbing. And I know that these are the women whom I really don't want. Even as much as I love black women, these are the worst among them. These are the ones who they themselves aren't stars and they would like to attach to you 
to hinge themselves to your star so that they can rise with you. But these are not the kind of women who would help you become a star. These are not the kind of women who would hold your camera for three hours while you do your live session. These are not the kind of women who are going to do all the things you need to become wealthy. These are the women who want to show up after you're wealthy and benefit from the wealth. In fact, very few African-American women have the instinct to work for their man. Just as you saw Gina 789, she felt as though she had to be compensated just to show up on screen to express her own opinion as though we need her or want her here. We don't. And she's still in the chat an hour later. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> Carrying on. Her time's valuable. Her time's valuable though, right? Uh, number two, excuse me, uh, yeah, phase two, the attachment building phase follows the exchange of contact information. Building attachment signifies creating rapport between male and female. Building attachment typically occurs through inter interaction through voice call, text message, social media, and in-person dates. Following that, you have what's called experience. So you have these common experiences which create a base of memories. And that's what allows you to build that attachment. Then following that, you have the bond solidification phase, which refers to the process whereby a relationship with existing attachment is formalized through culturally meaningful titles, boyfriend, girlfriend, etc. Then the last piece is Okay, so I'm not going to go through this whole paper, but let me say this. In summary, black women's behaviors in stages one and two greatly reduce the number of prospects they will have for marriage. So we don't even know how black women are behaving in stage three because they fuck up stage one and two so badly. Stage one is the approach. What I can assure you of is of the millions, it's probably been millions of women I've approached. Hell, if you came to one of the conferences, just in one night, you probably seen me spit game at like 30 chicks just in one night. You heard me? In one night in a couple hours. Just imagine a day in the life. You heard me? So I've spit game at tremendous numbers of women. And the African-American woman is a professional at messing up stage one, which is the exchange of contact information with a worthy suitor. And the number one reason for that is she is not looking for the right metrics. She is looking for social validation on a much higher level than the average woman is. The average woman is looking to figure out who you are. She wants to learn who you are. The black woman is more concerned with who knows you. She doesn't need to know you. She needs to know who knows you. Who do you matter to? Are you in the gang? Do you have a gang behind you? Are you a gang leader? Are you a rapper? Are you an athlete? Are you a track star? Like, who are you to the people around here? That's what matters to her. So even more than other women, she's a social creature. And by social, I don't mean socialize. I mean, she's deeply embedded in the society and what the society says is more relevant to her. That's why the things of fame and clout mean so much more to a black woman than they would to other women because they're not judging you one-on-one -on -one based on meeting you. They're judging you based on what they assess of you. And that's why when you meet a black girl, she's more inclined to say, oh yeah, you know, like, what's your IG? You know, when you ask for a phone number, she say, what's your IG? Then you give her the IG. Eventually, what she's going to do is she's going to see your IG I'm like, oh, man, homie got clout. He got a bunch of followers. People are actually commenting on his stuff. He has real people fucking with him. Then she's going to DM you her phone number. She wouldn't give you the phone number when you first kicked the game at her. She said, what's your IG? And then when she meets you and, and like sees all your stuff and sees where you travel to and sees that people admire and respect you, then she's going to DM you the phone number. Now you're in the game. But here's the thing. If you anything like me off rip, when she said, what's your IG? I'm like, little bitch, little bitty bitch. Ain't nobody trying to do all that shit. Kick rocks. You see, because when I first talk to the girl, I don't ask for the contact information straight off rip based on her appearance. Once I've talked to her a little while, little while and I've assessed like, okay, you have no personality, no intellect, nothing of interest. You're not on a road to anything in particular that I find impressive or interesting. I don't even want the contact information. I can't tell you how many black women I have perplexed because I approach them because they're attractive. We chop it up. We five minutes in. I say, hey, love, it's a pleasure meeting you. And she's like, oh, it's nice meeting you too. I start walking away. She's like, oh, hey, hold on. Like, you don't want to exchange contact info? What's your IG? I give her my IG, but and then they DM me that number. I don't even hit them back. Huh? 
So they fuck up stage one, which is the introduction, because they're looking at not who are you, but who knows you. Then stage two, building attachment. Black women are the hardest to deal with because they're such prideful creatures that they will not let you define the road. Generally, when you're in that building attachment stage, a man might think of a date, suggest a date idea, give a woman an invitation. Hey, do you want to go eat dinner here? Or hey, can you meet me at this time? The black woman wants to dominate in all spheres. She wants to define the time, define where we're going. She wants to choose how much you're spending. So because she's trying to define everything in that process, it causes the process to become slow and broken because it has no real leader. You're struggling for leadership in that process of building attachment. And because she has no respect for the self and people who don't have self-respect cannot give respect, you can only give that which you are. And if you lack respect for the self, surely you cannot give respect to others. And the black woman looks at the black man as a very low thing. So don't let you be a black man with accomplishment, with education, with money and with status. And then you behave like that's your reality. Oh, she's going to try to tear you down a couple levels. She's going to try to tear you down. She's going to say you're not humble. She's going to say you're arrogant. She's going to try to tear you down to her level so that you reflect what she feels inside. I know it's a major difference. You deal with a Latina. Oh, she's going to love on you, boy. She's going to be loyal. She's going to love on you. Deal with a white girl. She's going to encourage you. She's going to build you up. She's going to compliment you. You deal with a black girl. You're about to get all of zero compliments. You hear me? And in fact, you might even hear her saying things like, Oh, he want me to always be acting like his mama. Well, that's funny you mentioned that, love, because actually when you think about it, is a good woman not a reflection of a good mother? Hmm. You want your wife to cook for you. You want your girlfriend to cook for you. Did your mother not cook for you? Mine did. You want your wife and your girlfriend to look out for you and look out for your interests and try to advance you. Well, that's the same thing that my mother did. You want your wife and your girlfriend to support you and say positive things and, you know, make you feel like you're the king. Well, that's what a good mother does. So when you hear black women saying, I'm not his mother, sometimes they're getting a little confused. A good woman is a reflection of a good mother. Now, there is a difference. Some black men want to be taken care of. They want to be taken care of as though they are a child. I acknowledge that. Many of them can't even pay for their own expenses. Some choose not to. That's one thing. But many cannot, meaning if they chose to, they couldn't get it done. Huh? And I understand that's a, a man child and nobody wants a man child. But most black women wouldn't know what to do if a good man came up and offered his hand and said, hey, I'm Marquette Devon Burton. They liable to start acting like they have mental disabilities. Hey, intellectually I'm delayed. Hit the link. Where is it? It's in the description. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Saints, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of time to send in your last thoughts, questions, comments, or tuition if you appreciated this lecture. I've personally never seen anyone on the internet that addresses these topics so eloquently and consistently. So if you'd like to send in tuition, please do. If you'd like to hit the like button, that goes far. If you'd like to share the video, that goes far. I'll give you a little bit of time to send in your questions, and then I will get on with my evening. And for those who are speaking about the females in the chat trolling, well, that makes perfect sense. You see, the female has time to do things like that because they're not goal-oriented creatures. They only have a goal when they're following what a leader has identified for them. A leader is a man. A woman without a man is a woman who is lost. And that is why they have so much time to be idle and to pursue leisure, going to the spa, pampering themselves. You know, That's just a clear indication that they have no focus and no direction. So, of course, you're going to see things like that. Hey there. Did we see you yesterday? Yes, you did. Do you recall uh, yesterday we said that we have uh, we use cameras on this side of things? Uh, I don't want my black features criticized or to be put down by you. But I will say that you're very quick to give white women automatic credit. I know like a lot of black men tend to do this on YouTube. I think that it is a scam that y'all keep attacking and demeaning black women. There are nice That's black true. women. There are beautiful black women of your race that come from That's black true. men. Black men produce black women.
I'm just going to mute you real quick, not to stop you, but I'm, I'm saying, may I ask you a question, madam? Go ahead. Go you, ahead. You said that you don't want to have your black features degraded. Were you on the video call when I said that black women are my preference? No, I was not. Okay. So there, there's one place that you're wrong. You see, you came in with incomplete information and you made assumptions. That's number one. Then number two, were you on the video call when I said that not only do I have black women as my preference, I appreciate real black women who actually look like black women, which is to say that you are natural. You have not painted your face to make your face lighter than it's supposed to be. I'm against skin lightening. And I also don't like when black women perm their hair out. I like they, when they wear their hair natural as it grows out of their hair, kinky and tightly curled as an African's hair should be. I think that's a good thing that you're saying that. So I think that's great. I'm happy that you have a preference for black women, unlike many black male accounts that I have followed that have threatened black women and have you know, followed white women more or used white women as publicity to get status on their channels. I'm not very too much of support of black male interest channels that do this. They profit off of using black women's image instead of telling them things to encourage them, make them feel better, give them hope in themselves. They just talk about how crappy oh, they are and how trashy they are. What is your Go name? What is my, your name? name is, my name is Bianca. Bianca. Bianca, yes. So, and, and you're, you're, there's one of the lady saints uh, goes by the same name. So I, I just want to make sure everyone knows that you are not uh, her. But did you hear the recommendations that I gave to black women so that they might be more successful in securing marriage? Um, I heard, I heard, um, I just started, I just came into the show, but I heard a few of them. And one of them was you were talking about the approach with how we should carry ourselves and also the approach with how men are going to be expected to target women. Um, and I do want to say that um, everyone's situations like very different. Not all black women get to fit the appeal of the social standard of society. Um, I will say using my life as an example um, it has been very rough for me to try to fulfill the expectations of what black men want. Why is that? And, um, it's just, um, I came out of a lifestyle where, um, most of my life from youth to adulthood was extreme poverty. And not only that, but trauma and also emotional disorders and also eating disorders that led to stress and abuse and neglect from, having parents and from having grandparents who were very corrupt and destructive. I'm very grateful that I had my yeah, mother and my father, you know, go that's ahead. What, yeah. Do you feel as though presently you're open to learning from a man and taking a man's leadership? A hundred and a hundred and ten percent. I feel that's what I exist for is to better myself through the opposite sex. Uh, I don't have any gender biases towards black men. So well, gender bias is related to male, female. So you're saying relationship or romantic bias toward black men, correct? Right. Like I have no bias. I think that I can take as much support as possible. And I'm praying actually that God sends support my way because of my circumstances and my condition. I know a lot of people would say that I need to apply myself or be more accountable, you know, but I've been trying to do that for the past seven to 10 years of my life. You know, I went to college, I got a bachelor's degree, and then all of a sudden I was frauded out of school loans from the college itself. And then I had to, I was responsible for a bunch of debt, of, you know. I'll give you one piece of advice. Number one, I like that you're willing to listen. I, I respect that. And I appreciate that you seem to be oriented on finding a man who's willing to lead you and it, you speak to the idea that you can take direction to actually take direction is a different thing. One thing I've observed in you is that you are very uh, oriented on negativity and problems, negativity and problems. And what my recommendation is just to start with from a mindset position is that you orient on positivity and solution, which is the complete opposite positivity and solution in as much as it is said the woman is the coolness of a man's eye so that when we encounter you, we want to feel peace from you and we want you to emanate that 
or a man goes out and toils in the world when he comes home he wants peace especially i i trust from your tonation you are older than 30 older than 35 based on your tonation and in as much as that's the case you're going to be kind of stepping into something that's quite serious straight away would, would you agree i'm actually 27 no kidding yes do you exercise daily yes i do okay well there's definitely some things that i think we need to tune up if you're 27 there's a lot more hope for you than if you were uh, as old as i thought you were so i'm very happy to hear that now what do you think about the idea that you should be more positive and solutions oriented 110 percent um i agree with you i have a gratitude journal i have a mood journal exercise journal in the same mood journal i write about how i feel every day i write about how i feel when i exercise i write about i notice when i'm when i'm having mood swings when my mood is changing a lot there are days i can be depressed and i don't want to do anything for days and then there are days where my mood's very highly elevated i write all this down and i also write every day what I'm grateful and thankful for. And I also am praying first thing in the morning as I get up, you know, praying to God and, you know, saying my Psalms and also thanking God and blessing my parents as well as, you know, hopefully myself, you know. Well, I really respect that. And it sounds as though you, you have some saintly character within you. A lot of those things are in line with our culture. Um, now, I see a lot of people keep asking dress size in the chat. And I just want to let everyone know that I don't care what your dress size is personally. Uh, because I'm not looking to date you. And none of them are looking to date you, especially as they can't see what you look like. And the most important thing that I want the men and women to understand, her dress size doesn't matter. Her health matters. That's why I asked her if she exercises every day. Now, do I trust that she exercises every day for at least 13, uh, 30 minutes to the point of sweating for 30 minutes consistently? I doubt that because I can hear mucus in your voice. And mucus in the voice is usually an indication of health not being in proper order or someone being advanced in age. So I, I don't trust that your exercise regime regimen is up to my standards and that's fine you're not dealing with a saint hopefully you do end up dealing with a saint but the second thing uh shout out to kevin samuels he he ran things in one way but for me to ask you your dress size or figure out how many pounds overweight you are if you're overweight and you don't know it you got bigger issues you hear me so i'm not gonna you know degrade you by asking your your dress size or how many pounds overweight you are um so that i just want to set everyone's expectation because it seems like people are waiting for me to figure out like, damn, you fat as hell. That's why you're single because you're fat as hell. Uh, the truth is that even fat women can get men. What I believe in your case is there's the positivity and solutions oriented mentality that's lacking. And then uh, secondly, you are verbose. You, you tend to talk at length, which is an indicator that you're not being socially sensitive to one. Is this person tracking what I'm saying? You don't stop to do checks for understandings or check to see if the person's still with you. And number two, men don't like to hear these long ass goddamn stories. I mean, goddamn, you're kind of going in. So it lets me know you're a very expressive woman, especially in as much as we're strangers, you're expressing quite a bit. So I understand that any man who's going to be involved with you needs to be a bit more of a sensitive man and a man who's a great listener because your ass got a lot of stories to tell. Am I wrong? I thank you for giving me your advice. Um, I really, it's quite impressive that you're able to hear the kind of health issues I'm having. I am battling with my emotional health. I am also a very emotional and sensitive person. So um, having like, you know, mood withdrawals and um, being depressed and having anxiety with exhaustion is something that I'm battling with every day. Um, I do exercise 30 minutes a day, but if I were to ask for advice, um, I do walk with a sauna suit on now. I've been using it for two days. The sauna suit, I have been exercising for about three months now, but um, I also suffer with issues with fluctuation in my weight. And so like most black women, you know, analyzing, you know, we have the problem with stress and how we cope with stress. And this has been an observational study. Even white men know this now, but they have made MGTOW videos about African-American women and the stress we deal with, uh -huh. you know, that it's common. And I'm quite, you know, I, I have no choice but to agree. I mean, stress is my biggest dilemma, especially emotional stress. One moment, you know, go ahead. Yeah, no, that, that's where you've been living. I understand that. Now, just out of curiosity, when you do gain weight, is your weight get going to places that would please me or is your weight going straight to the gut? Like, do you look like Homer Simpson or do you look like uh, somebody that's super thick that might catch an eye when, you, when that weight goes on? Um, it goes more to my stomach area. 
Well, then, shit, we need to get you a plan. We need to get you a plan immediately. Now, look, I appreciate you calling in and sharing this with us. And I'm always thinking, you know, because we have this, this touch point right now, right? And I ask myself, being that you are a human being and you will continue existing after this conversation, I'm always trying to figure out, you know, how can we continue nourishing you so that, you know, we can add some value to you, add some goodness. Even with my podcast, every uh, Wednesday, I co-host a podcast with my buddy Jabrizi and we have a bunch of girls on and we could try to embarrass the girls and kick the girls off. But we think about community and the fact that they live in the same city that we live in. I'm the mayor of Las Vegas, in case you didn't know. And I'm asking myself, you know, how could we add value to you? So if you were trying to find some value or or help level yourself up based on the challenges you described just now, like how could we help you? Um, I would tell you that when, you know, advice wise, like when you talk about black women, you know, try to be a little bit more on the encouraging side, even if you have to get spiritual women, I'm talking about you. Okay. Yes. Me, you you know, me like, you know, more, just be more encouraging, you know, kind of like, you want me to be positive, kind of stay away from, you know, the demonizing, the talking about the ghetto fabulism and, and the stereotypical stuff, you know, because like, um, they're like, that you're going from Bianca all the way to black women. That's a challenge that a I lot mean, of females have, but we're not talking about black women. We talk about Bianca as an individual. So what we're asking um, yes, is for you to get to the next level. And I want, I want to make this very clear. And this happens in a lot of people. What they do is instead of taking out the challenge of dealing with themselves, it's so much easier to talk about women or black women or all these big ass struggles. We're talking about you and your life. And you're not going to move forward in your life until you address your issues individually. So what's the one next step that you need to do to get you in the position to walk down that path of actually securing a good man so you can live happily ever after? What's your one most important thing that you need help with that you think we can help you with? I want I want encouragement from black men. I want encouragement from the manosphere. That's what I want to be encouraged to, to, to be told positive about losing weight, to be celebrated when I lose weight, when I eat healthy, you know, since she said, I need to focus on positive things. I don't need to be reminded about the things that make me feel about my past or, you know, I like that. I like where you just took that. You said we just identify weight. That's one thing. And you say you write regularly. You know, within the SAS, and we encourage folks to review their goals regularly. We have goals in the area of health, wealth, and relationships. So you just identified a goal in the area of health: lose weight. Do you know how many pounds of weight you're trying to get off? Um, I'm trying to get off around thirty pounds. Goddamn, that's a lot of pounds. So we'll praise the Lord if we can get them off. Uh, praise the Lord because that's a lot of pounds. Okay, so shout out to you for having a number because that's the start of goal achievement is specificity. So you do have a number. That's good. Now you speak of encouragement. Yes, we could encourage you with the word, you know, encourage you with positive words about exercising, but words don't add up to a lot. You might need a little bit more. Like if there was something in action that we could take, is there any action that could help you actually get to it? Cause you claim you exercise 30 minutes every day. Like, like what more encouragement do you need if you're already getting it done? I'm just trying to get to the bottom of things, help a brother out. It's just the emotional aspect. Like, what people say, what you say to people impacts them. Words are very powerful, you know, and I, and, and how you talk to people, the tones you use are very important. You know, are you talking about people again? We're talking about you. Yeah. It's just the tones that are being used towards me. that are very powerful. You know, when people say words to me, it impacts how I think and how I feel. How do you feel like you've been pressured first of all? Um, How how do I feel right now? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel you've been talked to during this call? I feel more comfortable around you now that you've actually gotten a chance to get to know me, ask more um, deeper questions specifically about me and actually have listened to me to get to hear my story and, and what I go through without, you know, harsh criticism or extreme constructive criticism. And I like that better because it gives me the opportunity to relate without feeling hostile. Got you. Okay. Well, I appreciate you calling. There's a, another lady uh, who wants to come on. And so we're going to let her come on. And I appreciate you coming and sharing a little bit of your time. We do encourage you to stay connected. Uh, If you want good information and the community to help you with your goals and support you in in that, I encourage you to join the SAS. And you can join at patreon.com slash the saint and the sinner. 
And in joining that, we'll bring you into our Discord, bring you into our community, and help uh, support you. We ain't gonna bullshit you though. If you have some bullshit, we're gonna let you know. But we will support you in your legitimate health relationship and financial goals. Okay. Well, nice meeting you. Y'all take care. I'm glad I got on a better start with you. You have a great day. Peace to the saints. While you're switching over, we have Fritz G sent tuition. We have Heel Zen came in on Cash App. Peace of the Saints. He's very consistent. I appreciate those of you who support the work. And, and Jade will get you in shortly. Rakeley said, these women are tripping. I prefer black women. I think most black men do too. Right. Most men like a woman for the way she likes us. Ooh. Most men do, don't operate beyond that level. It tells Ooh. you all you need to know. Ooh, that was deep. <laughs> Shout out to the Saint. I actually had the pleasure of meeting him. He did a consultation. You can schedule that at marquettism.com. I had the pleasure of meeting the Saint. And that was some deep game. He said, most men like a woman for the way she likes us. That go back to the pimping which is uh, go with the woman who wants you. You know, go with the woman who chooses you. You dig? She's going to give you more mileage. You hear me? She's going to let you have your way. She's going to show you more love. Steven came in and said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Jay, why are you starting a trend to come in on here without your camera on? I just uh, prefer to be incognito, but hello, everyone. Thanks for having me on. You prefer to be incognito, huh? Okay. All right. Now, what do you have to say, love? I just want to say um, I've seen this channel and some of your videos recently. And I just want to encourage everyone to be kind to each other because obviously black women, I'm a black woman and I'm in my early 20s and Things have changed in the world as I grow and as I mature, I notice things have definitely changed in the world and black women have made a lot of mistakes. And I think that with time, we will recognize it. I think that black men should just forgive us. <laughs> I think black women should forgive black men and we should all come together to just appreciate each other. Oh, I think so. I don't think there's a major grudge between the two. If we are going to come together, we have to come together in the proper relation, which is to say that the black male is the leader in that outfit. Are we on the same page there? I definitely agree. But I think that black men sometimes are hard on us as a collective of black women. And it's because um, I just realized this uh, recently. It's because you guys are coming from a place that we have never experienced unless we've been actually close with a man um, that's a good leader. And a lot of black women, their fathers have left them. Uh, so they don't really know what's available to them. They don't know what a good man is. They don't know what good treatment is. Some of some of us, you know what I'm saying? We but, have to be exposed. What you're doing is repeating things we heard a billion times. And one of my goals is to move the conversation forward, number one, and then number two, move towards solutions. So yes. One thing you mentioned is a lot of black women have grown up without fathers. Yes, we are aware, 70% of them. The solution. Why, why is that? I don't understand. Well, here, see, I would go down that rabbit hole with you, but I won't. And I'm going to tell you why you should stop going down that. And that's why I'm glad I'm here to give this ism to you. One of the challenges, and you must have missed out because the first recommendation I gave to black women is to stop going through historical grievances, meaning things that are fucked up that happened to you historically, whether it was you or your family or people way back during slavery. You're asking, well, why is it that 70% of black families are illegitimate? It don't fucking matter. You don't actually have to truly understand that from the past to fix what we got going on today, right? That's number one. Because when you want to go through all that history of why are black men not being fathers in their household yeah we can go back to slavery we can go through jim crow we can go through the education and income issues but all that shit is a research project yes you're right we don't, we don't need a research project what we need are real solutions on the ground so yes step, right okay cool we are, we're on the same page there so step one is mate selection meaning that if a woman is to select an appropriate mate who will impregnate her and stick with her, she needs some rules and guidelines for that. Would you agree? Yes, definitely. 
cool. So that's one of the things that we're setting up our global standards to where we say he should meet this standard. He should meet this standard. For example, within the assassin, we say that you should own your first piece of real estate by age 25. I'm not saying you got to own a big house, but you should have some real estate that has been in your name by age 25. Does that seem reasonable? I think that's a great idea. That's a beautiful thing, right? And so basically we're setting these standards by which you can define a man. You can define if he's making good progress. You can define a woman, a female. And if she's making good progress for being a woman and if she'll be potentially be a good wife and mother, that seems reasonable to you. It does. It seems reasonable. Yes. Okay, cool. Now, are you single though? I'm single. Yes. Oh, man, I'm a single calling the big homie. I can't blame you. He's like this chocolate brother. Let me see if I can slide. Now, no, honestly. Yeah. What were you going to say? Oh yeah. No, go ahead. What'd you talk about? Um, I was not actually going <laughs> to see if I could slide, but honestly, I, I just really want better. I'm single because I've honestly just been going with, uh, going based off of my morals. So, you know, everything's been good. However, I definitely had to do some learning. So I'm aware now, um, that I'm just going to have to have certain things because, I like to show people love who show me love and you know that's a beautiful thing. But um, the world that we are in in society, money is very important. So I'm going to be having to move completely different. And I just would not allow myself to do it in the past because I felt like weird about it. Give you me know? a specific example of what you're saying. You said money is important. I need to move differently. What do you mean by that? Money is so important. Um, I'm successful. I just became successful. I put a lot of effort into it. And here I am now. Um, you sell lashes for a living now. Do I sell lashes? No. <laughs> I don't sell lashes. No, what do you mean uh, you're it's successful? Boring. I mean, it's yeah. boring. Honestly, I mean, I'm just successful because you have to have, uh, you know, strong people around you. And you have to be strong if you want to survive, you know? Okay. It sounds so, like you're talking in circles. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm kind of like wondering, like, what is Shorty talking about? So number one, I'm asking, what makes you think that you're successful? And what the hell does money have to do with your romantic relationship? I'm successful because I am creative and I put things together and it works out. And so I just keep doing that. And then what was the second question? Oh, Lord. Okay. And then what does money have to do with relationships? Oh man, because my boyfriends, I've had three boyfriends now okay. and um, none of them were able to like buy us a house and do this and do that, you know, in order to support a family. And I didn't care. Like now I'm 26. I didn't care at first yeah. because, you know, I'm successful and I was just, we were both successful together, you know? But now it's like, okay, if I actually do want to have kids, if I actually do want a family, then it's going to have to all be right or else there's no point in me doing it. So that's why I'm single, you know, and it sucks because I've separated myself from people. I, I just received a memo that you said you were in your early 20s and then you just turned around and said you're 26. Yeah. So that's, that's like your early 20s, mid <laughs> mid 20s would be 25. Early 20s would be earlier than 25, 26. You're creeping into what we call your late 20s. So okay. language, precision of language is critically important for understanding. That's number one. And then number two, um, I just want to make sure I understand some of the assumptions you had. You said a man can't buy you a house. Now, I don't know no. if you're going to achieve that, that American dream. Does he have to be able to cop a house for you guys to have a family? I didn't say a man couldn't. I just said that my exes couldn't. Right. The men you were dealing with couldn't. Now, is, is that a necessity for you to build a family with someone? If it is, it's OK. I'm just trying to find out. That would definitely be a necessity because I don't have children now. And so for me to have a child, um, yeah, we would definitely need a house to live in for sure. What about an apartment? Um, honestly, I don't have children now and I don't live in a, an apartment now. I have like a, a nice um, I wouldn't do that. No, it's not acceptable. Got you. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. And why do you think you haven't met the man that is financially qualified to give you the, the basics that you require? Um, because I'm from uh, what we would call the country. So uh, I had a long relationship with my high school guy. Right. And then so I think it's just location. I think it's the location. Yeah. 
Now, are you still in the country right now? Actually, I've moved. So, no. Okay, that's what's up. Now, if you were just rating yourself on attractiveness, like where we at with it? Like, I see your ass ain't got no camera on, so I'm going to go ahead and say in my book, you probably looking like a smooth ass six. Where we at with it? I'm very beautiful, actually. I'm very beautiful. Yeah, my beauty. Very, like, if somebody asked me, like, Mark, <laughs> are you handsome? I don't even think I would say I'm very handsome. I might say I'm handsome, but I wouldn't say I'm very handsome. Like that's a because beautiful <laughs> itself is a strong word, but you're you're yeah. very beautiful. That's deep. Okay, cool. And what what that body talking about? I just want to know how you describe yourself. I ain't believing a damn thing you about to say, but I just want to hear you describe yourself real quick. Yeah, athletic. I'm five six. I'm like one thirty five. Athletic, beautiful, young. Okay. Yeah. Got you. So so at, when you say athletic, I'm taking that to mean that you're slim. You don't have the the, the big you ain't dragging no wagon and you ain't got them juggle what's but you you slim and you don't have no extra fat so so everything is straight that's what you're saying yeah that's what i'm saying i'm i'm slim yeah that's what's up well it's a beautiful thing and i think that you're right you'll get better prospects living in a more central place in a proper city than you would in the country um, so cool. I, I appreciate you come, uh, calling in and you definitely use, a uh, one of our favorite phrases, which is to show love to those who show love to you. And that's something that we live by. So I appreciate you, um, you know, sharing your words. You have any parting words before you head out? Love one another. Appreciate one another. Thank you. Absolutely. Peace to the saints. We, we got a lot of beautiful women who hate coming on camera. That'll make no damn sense based on my experience with humankind. <laughs> we got Shasha. <laughs> hey, good night. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm great. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. I've been in a relationship for 12 years oh, with the father of my yeah yeah um, with the father of my my two daughters, and I still haven't got the ring. So I know <laughs> only because. <laughs> That boy is savage. <laughs> Only because he feels like marriage is more of a business um, arrangement. I don't know. Well, do you want the ring or do you want legal marriage? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Uh, both? I don't know. Can we have both? You could, but <laughs> I personally wouldn't sign up for that because if you get legal marriage, then what he's basically doing is empowering mm -hmm. you and providing you with an instrument called the government to access his yeah. assets and also penalize him using the police and other structures yeah. of the government. So that would be unwise. I don't think any wise masculine men would give you a tool yeah. to control <laughs> him. Now, if you were saying, hey, can a girl get a ring? And I'll tell you what. <laughs> reasonable for you to ask for a ring you know yes I, I can understand you it's a status symbol among females you don't want to look like you're a loose woman or a 304 at your age <laughs> kids so i can understand why you might want a ring i think that's reasonable now what if he said hey love i'll get you that ring but we're not going to go sign any paperwork All right, is that going to square things away um if i was making six figures like him then i wouldn't care but because i'm not um, I do care only because we do have two daughters and God forbid something happens. I would, you know, expect some type of financial help if something was to happen to him. Uh, what do you mean? I know he happens to him. Like if like, he dies? Or what are you talking about? Yeah, God forbid. Because my dad is a, is a veteran, right? And he okay. already set up my mom. Like he bought her property, a home. He left everything in her name. And, you know, what I mean, and he has his, his pension and social security. So God forbid anything happens to him, it, you know, basically goes to her and to take care of, our, you know, our younger sister. Mm -hmm. So he's like, if we're set up financially, I wouldn't need all of that. So that's why he doesn't believe in marriage. Like yes. He said we have life insurance and all that stuff. So I don't know. OK, so that seems reasonable if he's saying like, hey, I'm going to mm -hmm. leave all of my assets to you in particular. And I have a life insurance policy that will pay out to you. Now, he ain't been watching forensic files because that's how a lot of brothers get set up. <laughs> in ways. But um, he says, you know, I identified you as the beneficiary and I put the legal paperwork in place so that you have access to all of my assets in total. So if I were to, uh, you know, end up found with a 200 pound Latino on top of me and a, a <laughs> 
<laughs> me and my I'm unconscious, um, then you're going to get everything. So what more do you need than that? Mm, well, it's kind of embarrassing because even my toddler is asking, hey, why does why do we all have daddy's last name and not you? So it's starting to, you know, become a you, little you embarrassing. Can get that fa- no, that is improper. I agree with you there, especially after <laughs> 12 years in. Yeah. See me. That is improper in as much as like, say you were just 12 years into marriage, just you and him. It wouldn't mm-hmm. be such a big issue to have different last names. But when you have the kids, then yeah. you, you actually create like just a little bit of awkwardness when you go pick up the kids. And you're yeah. like, <laughs> I agree. It's it's not the way you want to live things. So why haven't you just said, hey, uh, let's make meet me halfway. Uh, I met you halfway on in not getting legally married. That was my concession as a woman to you as a male as my male leader, meet me halfway in that I want to get a ring and I would like to have my last name be your last name, which is our family name, which I think I'm entitled to. Mm-hmm. Because I, I didn't want to force anything. I mean, at this point, I, <laughs> I didn't want to force anything. If you're ready and you know I'm the one, then I know it's like idiotic because it's the years are, that we put in and the kids that we have. But at this point, I, I can't believe I'm even asking, you know? I'm sorry. It's just we. It's like <laughs> right now. Let's. But be, then it looks bad. I'm so sorry to cut you off. But then it looks bad when we go to his corporate, you know, events and all the wives are sitting there, ah, and then you're like the baby mama, like you know what I mean. So mm. it looks, it looks so bad. Like I can't even. I don't even know what to say. Like <laughs> I, shit. I feel you. I feel it's not, it's not proper. <laughs> That's not what I would promote. But <laughs> do you feel as though that there is any uh, major instability in the relationship presently to where? He, he feels like he might want to make an exit or you feel like you might want to make an exit? Mm, um, I, <laughs> he He's hinted before that um, it's best that we separate because I'm always going against the vision and not uh, side by side with the vision. Wow. And that was, <laughs> I mean, I see. well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I mean, because basically what you're talking about here is locking him in more deeply. And he's already expressed that that's not what he's seeing in the future. And it's because of behaviors that you're exhibiting. Mm-hmm. So if you yeah. consistently exhibited the behaviors that shows him you're not following his ultimate leadership, then it mm-hmm. makes sense that he's not going to want to go deeper into that hole. And I, I think it's unfortunate that you two are in this situation because you do have two children and you are 12 yeah. years in. And in my opinion, it's best to keep marriages together, especially when there are children involved. Okay. All right. He's right here listening, by the way. (laughs) Peace to the saints. Um, But (laughs) why haven't you been following the program, though? That's the real question. (laughs) Um, I think because of past uh, indiscretions and fidelity and all that stuff. So it was hard to to trust his process. Like I was always, <laughs> I don't know. Like I was always uh, fine. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know is not a good answer for that. Just I by know, the way, because uh, Joe Aston had twelve years to think about that, so that's not <laughs> a good answer. Um, but on a serious <laughs> note, if you have a Your man trust? who has made you his main woman, and you're living under the same roof, and he's providing well for you, and you mm-hmm. share children, you put your DNA together then you need to follow his program, period. And I don't, mm-hmm. I don't even care what the program is. Your, <laughs> his program is we're going to wake up at 5 a.m. every day and we're going to eat three cans of Jello. Uh, <laughs> that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Because you signed up for him to be your leader. And whether he's mm-hmm. been unfaithful in the past or whatever goofy thing he's done in the past, at some point you have to acknowledge that the past does not exist in the present lest you drag it forward. And if mm. you want anything in the future with this man, surely you're asking for something, but no one gets something for nothing. So the cost of the ring and the cost of the last name is complete submission with his program. And mm. from the sounds of it, it sounds like he's providing well and he has been stable doing yeah. most of what he needs to do. So I encourage you to follow that program and hopefully he honors you with his name and also makes that full good representation of your family so you can all be under that same family name. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Hey, it's truly a pleasure and a uh, shout out to him. And I'm happy you guys were able to listen to this together. Thank you. Bye-bye.
M. Shaba said tuition, big homie giving his platform to community and giving his own support to help. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Mr. Moore is back for his third time. He said, peace to the saints. With the new men and women coming onto this channel, it's time to do this missionary work and show them how the assassin moves. Exactly. And, you know, we could be on here embarrassing people, uh, you know, making fun of women. But let's be real. A lot of them already have low self-esteem. They don't need me to step on them. Now, granted, when they're out of line, I will put them back in line. But sometimes you have to do it gently so that you can actually have some growth and some progress. And the most important thing for me to example to you is the how. I could tell you what to do, but I'm also demonstrating how to do. How do you put a woman at ease? How do you listen to her? How do you stop her when she's going a little bit off the rails? And then how do you bring her to where she needs to get to at the end? Because one thing I can assure you, these entertainment programs where you're kicking the woman off the show or if you're yelling at the woman or you're embarrassing her, you're calling her fat, none of those things work in real life if you want a happy home. And I'm not saying happy wife, happy life. That's nonsense. We must both be happy. And that is going to happen from me being a proper leader. And a proper leader is not a tyrant. Thank you for that acknowledgement. Saints, I'll give you some time to send in your last thoughts, questions, comments, and we will go from there. And I also want to acknowledge uh, black women not to make assumptions and be hateful. I mean, that's a major quality I see recurrent. I saw a private message from the first lady that we actually brought on the ch uh, channel. Before she spoke, she sent this message. It reads, quote, you are quick to give credit to the same white people that incarcerate you while you love white women. She sent that before I actually brought her on. Now, as you observe, she was quite polite once we were able to hear her out. Obviously, she speaks from a well of pain that may have been created by someone or it may have been completely self-created. But the sad reality is that she's truly mistaken. Number one, she says, you give credit to white people that incarcerate you. I've never been incarcerated. So it's like, love, what are you talking about? And then secondly, she says, why you love white women? Several times I've always said my preference is black women. So it lets you know that she's not dealing with actual reality. She's dealing with some pain that comes from either her past or comes from nowhere, comes from historical grievances, and she's searching it out to have something to keep her mind engaged because she is a person that seeks conflict, and many do, and it's unfortunate. Saints, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead, hit that share. And if you haven't hit the subscribe, hit it and click the bell so you can get notifications so that you know when we go live. Let us end this with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you, the creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable and I am going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace of the saints.